Welcome to the News Cube. For J. Douglas Barker, I'm Donna Gatewood. The population of the United States is projected to hit 300 million this month. When the U.S. population hit 200 million back in the 60s, it was a big story, and President Johnson got some political mileage out of it. But now that we're about to welcome in the 300 millionth person, nobody seems to be celebrating, except maybe the parents. In fact, nobody even seems to know much about it. What's different now? Well, a lot actually. We'll tell you why in a minute. Don't go away, we'll be right back. North Korea has the bomb, oil prices dip below $60, and YouTube to sell soon. Hi, I'm Mark Hopkins and you're watching Potted Meat. Oil prices dip below $60 per barrel Friday as traders discounted threats by the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries to cut production ahead of its December meeting. Light sweet crude for November dipped below 36 cents to 59.67 a barrel on the New York Mercantile Exchange in the afternoon trading. YouTube, the fast-growing video site, received a flurry of takeover offers in recent days from suitors including Google, the web search specialist, say people close to the company. There have been a lot of offers set a person close to YouTube with bids in the range of 1.5 to 1.6 billion. Google and YouTube declined to comment. That's the highlights and the lowlights for this week. For more news, information, and entertainment, head on over to pottedmeat.com. I'm Mark Hopkins, and you're watching Potted Meat. Studies have shown that while undeveloped countries tend to show population growth, developed countries generally maintain the status quo or decrease in population. So why is the American population on the rise, and why is no one wanting to talk about it? Although no one will actually know who the 300 millionth baby will be, current mathematical projections indicate that it will likely be a male child born in Los Angeles County to a mother who is illegally immigrated from Mexico. And although Caucasians are becoming a minority in the United States, they are very much a majority on Capitol Hill, which makes the present population trend a political hot potato. America's changing, and American government should be paying attention to make sure those changes are for the better. But I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. Not when the majority of Washington lawmakers are busy looking out for special interests, like their own. In an effort to control what is seen by some as an immigration problem, the U.S. Congress has approved funding for a 700-mile-long fence that will cover one-third of the southern border. One-third? Okay. The money approved isn't nearly enough to cover the cost of construction. Really, it's just the down payment. And with the level of accountability, or not, these days, the $1.2 billion so far approved could very likely evaporate into a haze of administrative costs, and the fence may never be built. In fact, lots of little hands are already at work diverting the money into other projects, with the excuse that the country will end up with a virtual fence. That should be great for keeping out virtual illegals. Even if the fence is built, how effective will it actually be when we've got the TTC? The Trans-Texas Corridor, a huge private highway slash railway slash 
utility conduit from Laredo to Kansas City and eventually all the way to Canada. You see, American companies have moved much of their production out of the country so that they can make more money. Now they want a cheaper, faster way of getting their finished goods back into the country so that they can make even more money. They want someone else to pay for it, of course, so they do what big companies always do, buy off politicians. And what are some really intense bait and switch operations? The project will be built by a group that is headed by a Spanish company, supposedly with private money, although the builders have already asked the federal government for a loan. Of course, the American government is bankrupt and is borrowing heavily from other countries right now, especially China. So, the American government will be borrowing money from China and loaning it to a Spanish company so that it can build a private toll road for the purpose of moving cargo that should have been made in America to begin with. And naturally, the builders, Sintra Zachary, and its backers will keep the profits. So what's in it for the citizens of the United States? Imminent domain issues? Environmental problems? Security concerns? This thing will be a massive private conduit for pretty much anything that anyone on the sending end wants to move. And the southern end of the TTC will be in Nuevo Laredo, not one of your better cities. Why have the people behind this fine plan worked so hard to keep their paperwork secret? There's been a lawsuit over this with some success, and a representative from Virginia has proposed a resolution to keep the road from being built, citing some very pertinent points that all U.S. citizens should take a look at. You can find the resolution number 487 detailed at corridorwatch.org slash TTC. And for more information about the TTC, we found a couple of other good websites, texasobserver.org and texascorridorblogspot.com, which has late-breaking news. Or you can search the topic, keyword TTC, and find out more. It's well worth a look. Meanwhile, we'll be looking ourselves and keeping you posted on this monumental boondoggle. In the meantime, from the News Cube, for J. Douglas Barker, who's out of the country, I think, I'm Donna Gatewood.